Hey guys, welcome back to Predictapalooza. In this episode, we will be restoring this lovely blonde holiday model from 1959. Hey guys, we're keeping that 21 inch predicted train a running. I have all the parts I need to restore a whole bunch of these. And now that I've kind of got a groove going, I want to keep going. Just I did a bunch of 17s in a row, I'm going to do a bunch of 21s in a row. So next up is the blonde that uh, was shrink wrapped when I got it. And we did an unboxing, unwrapping a while ago. And, uh, uh, it turned out to be in really good condition, and the picture tube was pretty good. Not like new, but pretty good. Uh, I know the owner of this is uh, very interested in getting it running because he know the owner of this set knows the previous owner of this set, or a relative of the previous owner, and uh, uh, everybody's watching along to see how it goes. Uh, as I recall, there weren't any significant repairs. I think this is pretty much all original. Even this fusible resistor looks like the original. Uh, except this one control, maybe. Looks a little funky. Uh, it's, not the, it's not the vertical linearity control we've had so much trouble with. It's the coarse horizontal. Yeah, this saw looks original, so I'm just going to dig right into it and move along and pull out the board and restuff it and do all the recapping and all the stuff I usually do, and we'll pick up when that's done and try powering it up. Flash forward a couple days, let me get you guys up to speed. Finished all the work on the main board and reinstalled it. Finished recapping underneath. Put in a fresh set of tubes. Have it plugged into my modified telecheck, so it plugs right into a predictor. Hooked up uh, an external speaker, have an external signal source. I've already done a power up with the fusible resistor removed, so just tube filament continuity, they all lit up. This will be the first attempt to power it up with uh, power going to the whole set. While working on it, I, uh, I noticed a few things. One, the AC. Uh, interlock is broken. It's it's broken in half on a little phenolic board. I'm going to need to replace that. It's it's intact enough. I can plug this set in, but it really needs to get replaced. There seemed to be some kind of charring in this area or discoloration. Some residue was on the metal. Nothing obvious that had gone up in smoke. But some work has been done on this. Power switch has been replaced. It's now a push off, pull on instead of a push on, push off. I think the rest of the controls are original. Anybody want to take odds on whether the vertical linearity control is shot? This is the third 21 inch set I've restored. It was bad in the first two, so I'm just going to assume it's going to be bad in this one as well. We'll talk about that more later. I'll show you how uh, it's, a, it's a flawed design. Same flaw that the 17 inch sets have, so I may want to experiment and see if I can modify the circuit to make it more reliable. Um. The uh, high voltage connector, instead of going into the side of the high voltage box, is going into the uh, uh, bottom. You can get at it very easily down there. And now with this new setup, I can leave all this plugged in and I could troubleshoot down here with the set turned on if need, if need be. We'll see if we need to get that far. Uh, all right, I think that covers everything. Oh, it looked really dirty at first, too, but this cleans up really nice. That high voltage box is gleaming, IF shield. Uh, there's some light surface corrosion. It was probably in a damp environment for some of its life. But uh, the more I got into it, the more I cleaned, uh, the, the nicer it's looking. So uh, I've gotten more optimistic with this set as time has gone on. <laughs> uh, all right, let's uh, reduce the light a little bit, and here we go. 
Alright, uh, dial lamp is lit up. Tubes are warming up. Draw three quarters of an amp. Drawing an amp. Or sorry, not an amp, uh, 0.8 amps. An amp. Ooh, we had high voltage for a second and it was just a line. We do have hiss. Try adjusting the brightness. You can hear the high voltage working, it's making a horrible sound. Now there is a fine and a coarse horizontal frequency adjustment. And with these sets, when the horizontal frequency is off, like, it tends to sound really horrible and it kills the high voltage. Ah, there, it's coming back. So it's just so far off frequency that it does not make enough high voltage. Okay, so, I'll turn the brightness down. Vertical linearity control has got to be shot, which is why we just have a line. Let's see, uh, I'll try the same trick I did on the other two sets, which is if I turn the linearity, which is in the back, got to use a screwdriver. If I turn it enough, I can get to a spot where it still will conduct. Oh, there it goes. I could have also uh, taken a resistor and jumpered across these two terminals, like a 1K resistor. I think it's a 1K pot. So the horizontal frequency is still way off because that's why it's looking so horrible and jagged and screechy. So let's try the course adjustment. <laughs> ah, better. So wow, I have to go pretty far to one extreme to get it to, to calm down. Okay, that's an awesome start. We have a raster. It's pretty bright. Uh, we have hiss. We have snow. All excellent. Do we have reception? No. I think I'm on channel 3. So local distance switch. Seems to be better in the high gain position. Uh, Try wiggling tuner tubes. Make sure the IF connection is good. And the IF tubes. Ooh. Huh. So this third tube here, it's a 5AM8. It's a combination, I think, third IF tube and the detectors in here. And when I push on that, kind of wiggle it. Kind of seemed for a second like maybe some kind of signal was getting through. Is a better shot for you. I have not pulled the IF board yet. Ooh, but sure it does seem like when I monkey with this tube that there's I get it just right, there's this hint of a signal coming through. No sound though. Generally these boards are really reliable and they have a different kind of socket. It's not quite as uh, prone to damage. But uh, let's let's pop the shield off and take a, a better look at that. So there's two things I could do at this point. Do what I'm about to do, which is to take the shield off and inspect this and check for... Well, I think i got to take the board out to look for damaged traces. It's not hard to get the board out, though. Um, the other thing I could do is if I got a pattern generator, 
I can eject the video right here. This little green wire here. This little wire. There's only one wire. It goes from the IF to uh, this board. So this is composite video at this point. So uh, let's try that. I'll get a test pattern generator going. I would use my B and K, but it is buried back there. That that needs to get out soon because I need it for some other stuff too. Ah, I'm so used to working on older TVs, I forgot that the VG91 is all I need, regardless of whether I wanted to inject signals with the tuner, or the IF, or composite video, because this does 44 megahertz IF. I only need the B and K for older sets that use a 22 megahertz IF. So, let's give this a try. I'm doing a standard video output, it's 1 volt peak to peak. 75 ohms. It's a hot chassis, so I have it on an isolation transformer. Otherwise, this would be a bad idea. Ooh. Oh, I don't think I can very. I think the alpha level is uh, fixed when you use the video. That's one downside to this. Uh, it's trouble locking, but it's clearly it's touched. It's a crosshatch pattern, and it is getting through. So, that again points to the trouble being on the IF board, or the tuner perhaps. I think the tuner was locking on a multiple, or the horizontal was locking on a multiple. Well, I'm not going to worry about this too much because I don't know if I have the right voltage levels, but clearly a signal's getting through. If I wanted to inject an IF signal, uh, yeah, I can uh, pull this cable out. It goes in sooner and inject it right here. Now, if I want to go in between the stages, though, then I need to get this cover off and, and dig down in there. So let's try. Switch from uh, video to. IF frequency modulated. Oh, I'll just clip this right around. It should be good enough. That's a cable from video out to IF out. Switch this to. Oh, interesting. I almost made a really bad assumption there. Signal injection to the rescue. I was assuming it's the IF board. No, it's the tuner. Good, because I happen to have a tuner that I know works right here. And we can substitute this for that because they're exactly the same thing. Well, good and bad. Tuners are not <laughs> something fun to dig into. Uh, but, hmm, how about that? I'm not crazy about the lack of sinking. I'm 
but that's sound. Oh yeah, sound. And there's a ton of gain because I'm going to the front of the IF, so I have this generator down on the lowest range and the lowest setting. But I still might be overdriving things a bit. Well, let's try injecting RF because if I put my generator on max output, I'm pretty sure it can put out more RF energy than the other source I was using. So maybe let's see if we can just ram a signal through this thing. Okay, let's see what this can do for us. Now, rather than going to the screw terminals on the back, I clipped my input right to the tuner itself, just in case there's anything funky with those terminals or the little wires going to them. Uh, let's see, let's get this back to standard TV in channel 3, the highest output level. Hmm. Something as stupid as the little cable going from the tuner to uh, this is no good. Or let's see, where's the power cable for the tuner? That's down below. I don't want to do that with it turned on. Let's make sure. Now, I know the tuner is getting filament power, otherwise the tubes wouldn't light up. But maybe something else going on with it. So, so there's a few wires that go to this. There's power. And there's an AGC signal. Maybe the AGC is screwed up. Or there's always a simple. Well, assume the simplest thing first, I suppose. That maybe it's just filthy and it's not making good connections inside here. So I've rotated it so much and tried other channels that I would have thought that uh, something would get through. It's also possible somebody's monkey with the tuner and it's just way off, so let's try uh, uh, channel 8. No. I know it's doing something, otherwise it wouldn't be snow. See, if I disconnect the tuner... No, actually we are still getting something. Well, if I ground it, I suppose it should. Stuff's still picking up just random noise out of the air, I guess. So maybe I, <laughs> I don't know that this is doing anything. Actually, yeah, now that I think about it. When I change channels, it should be... There should be a crash as it goes from channel to channel. Something is not... Alright, let's try my spare tuner. Uh, and if that works, then we'll think about troubleshooting this. Or I could simply just swap the two out, I suppose. Alright, here we go with a new tuner. Here's a look at the old one. Didn't see anything obviously wrong with it. Here's where the signal comes in. Goes to these two outside lugs. We had some chokes, we have some coupling transformers. If any of those were open, that would be an obvious problem. There are a few parts inside. Mostly it's coils and ceramic kind of caps, type caps and stuff. Things that really rarely go bad. But there are a few resistors. Could have gone open and, you know, kind of figured it would work with this tuner since I already... So I, took, I took it out of a working set. Vertical sync is a little twitchy, I suspect, because we have a bad linearity control. I have it cranked all the way in one direction. But otherwise, uh, yeah, it seems to be working, working all right. Uh, I'll fool around a little bit more with the vertical, see if I can get that working better. I flipped the uh, one wire on the vertical linearity control. 
should let me put this into a better operating range in the vertical oscillator and maybe it'll be a little more stable. Or not. There's just no vertical lock, which just keeps rolling to one side or the other. Well, other than that, it seems to be working fine. So I will double check my work. Hmm. It's not so simple as just the frequency being off. There's stretching and squeezing action that's going on. I'm going to try as I might with the height and the linearity and the hold control. I just can't get rid of that. So back to me checking my work. Nothing jumped out at me immediately, but I'll, I'll go through it part by part to make sure I didn't do something stupid. Upon further physical inspection, found the problem. No, I didn't put the wrong resistor or capacitor value anywhere on the board. What I messed up on is this. A colleague of mine designed and had a whole bunch of these circuit boards made up. Each one of these has a set of uh, the couplets, the resistor condenser networks for the 21 inch sets. And uh, the designators on here of R1, C1, and such match the Philco service info. Well, I cut up a bunch and was making a bunch for all the upcoming sets I need to restore. I ran out of parts. What I did that was stupid is, <laughs> when I stopped working on them, I hadn't finished this board because I ran out of a couple resistor values I needed, but I threw it in the bag with the finished ones. When I was restuffing this board, I grabbed one and plunked it down. We're missing some things. Notice R2 doesn't have a resistor in there, nor does R3A. Should be a 47K here and a 33K here. That's the thing that really killed me is 33K, 47K. Really, really common values. I couldn't believe that I ran out of them. <laughs> uh, well, since then, I ordered up some parts from Mauser, and I just said, okay, never again. So I ordered up 147K, 133K, plus a bunch of the other parts. So I'm pretty sure I now have enough stuff to finish all the rest of these predictive sets I have lined up, which is about a dozen more. <laughs> We're going to move on to some other things. Now the good thing is I'm pretty sure I can slip in those two resistors while this is all in place. Maybe I'll take that tube out and I should be able to solder from this side pretty readily. Double-sided board actually you can solder from either side and it flows through pretty well. Ah, uh, I think that will make a world of difference. So what board is this? This is the vertical integrator. Briefly, uh, the video signal consists of course of the video information and there are also synchronization pulses for horizontal and vertical. The vertical being a big wide pulse that happens when the electron beam gets to the bottom of the screen. But it also contains horizontal pulses. So there, within that big vertical pulse, there are serrations. This takes those out and turns it into just one big clean pulse. That's what the integrating does. It integrates that signal and makes a broken up pulse into a clean pulse. You need those two resistors to make that happen. Without it, I'm sure the vertical sync pulse looks like a mess. 
So I'll pop those two resistors in there and um, I think that'll take care of that. Then uh, I'll ponder what to do about the tuner. The two missing resistors have been installed. I expect this will make a noticeable difference. about locked as it is. Yeah, now I can lock. Of course, everything is totally out of whack now, so let's see. Get that height up. Yeah, now it locks nicely when I change the vertical hold control. Alright. Oh yeah, it's much better. If I leave the channel, come back, it's just bam locked. So, uh, now let's take a, a look inside that tuner. Hopefully it's something obvious. Well, there's nothing obvious wrong with the tuner. There's about half a dozen resistors in there. They all chuck within 20% tolerance. I have continuity through the antenna input coils. The tube sockets look okay, so I went and used deoxit with Q-tips on all the rotary switch contacts, and I lubed up the mechanism, and I'm going to use deoxit on the tube sockets, put it back together and hook it up, and uh, let's see if we can get anywhere. If not, uh, I'll look on the service info and see if there's voltage resistance chart for the tuner um, pins. Uh, and uh, go from there. Not an easy thing to troubleshoot as you can imagine. Uh, it's tough to get in there and check voltages while the set is powered up. Well, I did find the resistance chart for these two tubes in the Sam's Photo Fact. I checked everything, everything checked out. Popped the cover off, looked over everything, and gave up. I <laughs> couldn't find anything wrong with this. So I cleaned up my spare tuner and installed it. And the set is working extremely well. So the only thing left, I believe, is to fix up the uh, broken AC interlock there. And uh, I'm working on putting this all back together. And call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this infection, ketoacidosis, or an allergic reaction. And don't take Now that the chassis is working with the little CRT, time to slide it back into the cabinet and make sure it works with the full size CRT. And I gotta say, I've been really spoiled. Both this blonde holiday and the mahogany holiday I recently finished are in excellent condition. Probably the two nicest holidays. I've ever seen. This finish, this is all fake. It's printed on wood grain. It's almost always deteriorated, alligator, flaking off. Not on these two sets. It's just one chip here. Otherwise, it's darn near flawless. That's just beautiful. The screen cover is also in fantastic condition. I don't think I need to take it off and do any cleaning, which is <laughs> a nice change of pace. It does have shrinkage though, just like with Michael's set. There is a growing gap between the band and this and this and the back cover. This tenite, it's gradually shrinking. But at least it's not pressing up against the CRT. There aren't any marks and there's no funkiness, mold, mildewy stuff inside. Uh, the plastic does need to be cleaned. It's not a big deal. I'll go over that. So it looks like somebody did in the past, but they didn't quite get down on their knees and get down in there and get into <laughs> the nooks and crannies, so I'll take care of that. Uh, the antenna is busted as they always are because it was a flawed design and the, uh, the mechanism, the body of it would split and the, the pressure of the spring would pop the uh, retractable antenna out. So that's why they usually just have the stump, but we have a solution. I'll be fabricating a replacement. Otherwise, just want to make sure all the leads are 
dressed properly and uh, hopefully we'll be wrapping this up real quick I'd like to highlight another one of the charms of these TVs as I am assembling it when I uh, demonstrated using that portable test CRT I mentioned one of the great things was you could connect the high voltage lead from the underside of the chassis see the high voltage anode lead to the CRT is connected up in here you can't disconnect it without taking, disassembling this entire head unit. It's staying attached to that CRT. And the wire comes down and around and around. And it comes out here. This needs to get connected down in there. The way you do that is it goes through a hole in the side of the high voltage box. And then has to do a 90 degree turn and go down to that little hole down there. A little bit easier if you take out the high voltage rectifier, however, the plate cap is connected with this short wire right to the high voltage secondary. If I take this off, this wire is old and brittle, this wax is old and brittle, that's going to start cracking. Worst case, I'll snap this lead off. That is a difficult repair to make, so I try to leave these in place if at all possible and snake this around and of course this wire is very old and stiff and tough to deal with as well so I fish it through as best I can and I take needle nose pliers any kind of long dental type tools or whatever and just try to start working it down there once you get the tip of it in the hole uh, then you can take a flat plated screwdriver and kind of catch it on the edge of this metal cap here and shove it down all the way uh, it's, it's not much fun to do, especially if you have to repeatedly do it. When you superimpose it over another shot, the brighter object is all that's visible. Did you see that? Amazing! Well, the special tube is a little tired, if you recall from when we tested this. So, let's let it run for a while and see what happens. Uh, it's an original. I, I'm wary of trying to rejuvenate it because uh, I've never had any luck with that. But uh, I suspect if we let it run for a while, it'll get better. The sound is fine. The reception is fine. It's a good sharp picture. It's just a little dull, but it's it's getting better. Just as I'm talking, it's getting brighter and sharper. Get cracking. Because I personally think I am well on my way to achieving invisibility. I've been playing about an hour with no issues. I think the picture quality got slightly better. So uh, we'll go with it. I'll get out uh, my test pattern generator and make the final tweaks. And I think we can call this one done. Did you choreograph that? After tweaking the horizontal vertical linearity, I ran the picture tube through the auto restore function on my Suncor CR70 and boy it really helped. They got the emissions well into the green and they're holding there fairly steady. Picture is vastly improved. I have my bright shop lights on right now and it is very watchable. How long it will last I couldn't say but I've had it on for about half an hour now and no sign of degradation. Um, so I am calling this project done. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Assassin of the army of General de Gaulle was dropped from an airplane over Germany. They say he was supposed to kill some.